Hi, I'm Joe Ellison, and I'm back with another excerpt, the ninth, from my paranormal adventure novel, Snarky and Putt's Paranormal Attorneys at Law, number three, The Case of the Canine's Curse. In this excerpt, we join our hero, R. Andrew Putz III, attorney at law, and his companion, Frank Migliori, the restaurateur, innkeeper, and ex-cop, as they follow the mysterious man-dog that was once Putz's client, Elliot Babington, in search of Putz's kidnapped paralegal, the annoying Adele Brookfield, and enter into the wine cellar. Let's start. With no hassle, they found the entrance to the wine cellar. A doorway behind the double stairway in the entrance hall led downwards. The dog went right to it. Putz and Migliori followed him. On the level below, well lit, marble floored like the hall above, they found another door, shorter than normal, crafted of thick oak planks, bound by two broad iron bands, one across the top, one across the bottom. A lever operated the lock. Putz lifted it, and with a push, the door opened on pitch-dark space. The dog ran past the two men as Putz felt inside for a light switch. Migliori flung the maglite's beam after the canine, but it, but it had already disappeared. They heard the sound of its nails clicking against stone stairs, still running down beneath them, then fading away far to the right. Putz found the switch. The rusted overheads flickered on, ancient, dim, and orange-toned, illuminating a circular stone stairway descending rightwards. Cobwebs arched from wall to wall. Cobwebs give me the willies, Migliori said. He switched the mag light off. You first. Putz grunted, ducked under the low lintel, and started down the stairs brushing his way through the cobwebs with random swipes of his arms. From an unexpected distance, they heard the dog bark. The stairway turned around one and a half times before Putz and Migliori reached bottom. Putz, grimacing, wiped his hand against his pants leg. Damned cobwebs are sticky, he complained, picking them out of his hair. They give me the willies. Migliori repeated. He looked through the dust they had kicked up around themselves, at the dirty stone floor, the rough stone walls, the cobwebs stretching from wine rack to wine rack. It's an honest-to-God wine cellar. He pointed the mag light. Look. What? asked Putz. There, Migliori pointed again. All the wine rack rows have cobwebs stretching across them, except that one. You think someone went through there? Don't you, Migliori asked, brandishing the mag light? Me first this time. Putz brought up the rear, feeling his way between the racks. Their wood, plank and beam, splintered and sometimes powdered at his touch. Old, real old, he thought. He stopped for a second to pull a splinter out of his forefinger with his teeth. Migliori turned back to him. Get a load of this. He swept the mag light across a span of the racks. Caked dust on all the bottles, almost. Here and there, he pointed his finger, a label wiped clean. Not long ago at all. And every so often an empty space, a bottle missing. What do you think? You're the cop, Putz countered. What do you think? I think somebody's been having a party. Oh, God, Putz prayed. I hope not. They came to the end of a row, into an open space about fifteen foot square. An ancient decaying oak cabinet, surmounted by a rough, deep-gouged tabletop, stood rooted in the middle of the space. The dog came around from behind the cabinet, whining, whimpering, scratching at its base, brushing up against the men, then darting under the tabletop to scratch again. Putz squinted in the low, flame-colored light. Frank, there's a stain here. He touched the tabletop. It's still damp. 
Migliore shone his beam on the tabletop, lighting up a deep red stain. He put out his hand. You're right. It's dry down here, but the stain's fresh. Can't be more than an hour. It's gotta be, Putz cried. The dog's been with us. What are you talking about? The dog's right here, and here's the stain. Migliore played the maglite beam into the space's corners where shadows crouched. You see? Bottles opened. Corks. Somebody's been drinking down here. He snapped his head around. Where the hell is the girl? Putz trembled. Look at the dog under the table. Migliore bent over. The dog scratched at the cabinet's base, whimpering. What's it doing? The girl. Adele, she's not in the cellar. I didn't tell you. There wasn't time. There are tunnels underneath. Migliore caught on. The cop in him took over. We gotta move this cabinet. He grabbed the edge of the tabletop and heaved. Putz joined him. The dog ran out from under the table. Push, Andy! Push! Migliore strained. Putz griped. It weighs a ton! Migliore stopped and flashed his beam under the tabletop. The base. Do you believe it? It's stone. Damn thing must weigh five, six hundred pounds all by itself. He wedged his back against the table's edge and pressed out with the full force of his thighs. The cabinet moved back an inch. This isn't normal, Andy. The weight's here for a reason. It's on top of something. Putz threw himself forward against the edge with Migliore. The cabinet scraped against the stone floor and gave up another inch. We're moving it! <clears throat> the dog howled. Migliore gave another thrust. What's his problem? Putz broke out into a sweat. The cabinet yielded another two inches. The dog howled again and rolled on the floor. What's the matter with him? Migliore heaved. Oh no, Putz muttered. Sweat coursed down his face. The cabinet scraped the floor two inches this time. We're getting it, Putz yelled. The dog writhed along the length of near side of the space, its howls echoing an almost human scream. The animal's in pain, Andy, Migliore shouted. Keep pushing, Putz shouted back. We've got to do something. We can't, Putz yelled. Just hurry up and push. Another heave. The cabinet scraped back a half foot. Migliore leaned back against the table's edge. He flashed the mag light underneath. Yeah, he panted. There's a hole down there. Looks as big as a manhole, he took a breath. Bigger. The dog stretched out full length on the floor, rolled and screamed. Putz bit his tongue. Sweat poured over his eyes. He brushed it away with his fingers. Migliore reached down and tried to grab the dog, but it screamed and rolled away from him. He turned to Putz. We can't let the animal suffer like this. Look at it. It's stretched out stiff, like rigor mortis. It's losing its hair. It's coming out in clumps. The only thing we can do, Putz wheezed, is find the girl and get out of here. Migliore felt for the lump of metal in his vest. We can put this poor thing out of its misery. And... If you want to find out what this canine's misery means, then you'll just have to buy yourself a copy of Snarky and Putz number three, The Case of the Canine's Curse, which is available in either ebook or paperback like this, and you'll find links to Canine's Curse as well as the other Snarky Putz and Putz novels as and my other works. And, of course, links to my website, my Amazon author page, etc. down below in the description. <clears throat> of course, I'd like you to give me a thumbs up, a like for this video. I'd like you to subscribe uh, if you can put up with my irregular posting schedule. And I would like to thank you for dropping by. And I hope to see you again real soon. Thanks a lot.